When you're testing transformers, you need to understand that there is a variety of transformers that are used in control of HVAC equipment. This particular video training program is going to focus on these different transformers and how to use an ohmmeter to check them to make sure you understand whether they're good or whether they're bad. Hi, my name is Jim Johnson and I'm going to be your narrator for this fundamental approach to testing transformers. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the various types of transformers that are used in HVAC systems for control purposes and we're going to talk about some fundamental issues about transformers and how they're constructed and different types of transformers you need to be able to test to find out number one, are they okay or have they failed? And number two, when you install a new transformer to make sure you're doing it in the right fashion. And what we're going to do is begin our discussion on transformers by taking a look at the schematic symbol for a transformer. What we want to point out here is that we're looking at the primary winding of a transformer. We're looking at the symbol in the center that indicates some type of laminated plate. And then we're also going to be looking at the secondary winding of the transformer. We want to point out that understanding this from a schematic perspective helps us test transformer windings in the correct way. And what we're going to do now is show you the very simple approach to following that schematic and using that information to test the windings of a transformer. Let's take a look first of all at the primary windings. We have one wire connected to the neutral side. This is a 120 volt primary and the other side connected to the hot side. And what we're doing now is testing for resistance on that primary winding. And what you can see right there is that our meter is showing about 19 ohms resistance. Now when we switch over to test the secondary winding, we can understand that our schematic, when it shows us a primary and a secondary, does in fact show us that the primary winding is going to have more resistance than the secondary winding. And if we take a look at our meter, we can see that right there we're just showing a little over one ohm resistance. In other words, almost 20 ohms resistance on the primary and only a one ohm resistance on the secondary. That's pretty much a standard approach for this kind of transformer right here. And now here is a simple pictorial illustration of why those meter tests that we just did worked as they should. For example, what we're showing you here is we're showing you the primary winding. This is the generator, so that would mean power going into the primary winding of the transformer. And we're also showing you the secondary winding over on this side over here. Now what we want to point out is that the electromagnetic field that travels around this wire right here is going to be picked up by the plates around which the winding is wrapped, the iron or steel core, and what's going to happen is that electromagnetic field then is going to travel around those plates until it gets picked up by the secondary winding. One thing you want to notice here is that the primary winding has many more turns in it than the secondary winding. Basically what that boils down to is this. The voltage that's applied here in a primary format, in the case of our transformer, was 120 volts, will only leave on a 24 volt level because of the fewer windings on the secondary side means that it has less opportunity to pick up that electromagnetic field than it had bringing it in over here. The end result being will deliver 24 volts out of this step down transformer. Now using an ohmmeter to test the transformer is certainly one way to find out what it is or isn't going to be able to do. But the other thing we want to point out is, is that when you're troubleshooting a piece of HVAC equipment and you suspect that the control transformer might be the problem, you should be doing a voltage test to find out what's going on. One simple way to look at it is if we have primary voltage being applied but no secondary voltage being delivered, then we've isolated the problem as being the transformer. For example, the one that we did the simple ohmmeter test on, what we were talking about was the primary winding. In this case, Black and white wire means 120 volt primary. If I measured 120 volts coming into this transformer and then switched right over and measured zero volts coming out, that would mean somewhere along the line inside this transformer we're applying power in, but nothing is coming out and that would mean that the transformer itself had failed. That's a simple four-wire transformer. Now what we want to point out is that not all transformers are simple four-wire transformers. In some cases you may have what we call a multi-tap transformer. In this case you're going to have a multi-tap primary which means that you can use it in a lot of different applications. For example, this transformer right here is showing us that we have a situation where we can connect it to 120 volts 208 volts or 240 volts and in any one of those situations we'll still wind up with 24 volts coming out. Now in order for you to determine what this is all about it's real easy to do with an ohmmeter. 
what we can show you is, is that we want to identify the common wire being the white one. That means all of the wiring connections that you would make, regardless of the voltage you're going to connect this to, the white wire would be one of those connections. Now, if we were to connect it to a 120 volt circuit, we can understand that the color code, like the other transformer we showed you earlier, would in fact be the black wire which means that if we make a connection here on our meter, it's showing a resistance of just a little over 20 ohms. But what if we wanted to connect this not to a 120 volt circuit, but we wanted to connect it to a 208 volt circuit? That would mean we'd switch over to the red wire, and we can test that particular transformer winding, and what that shows there is that we're now looking at a resistance of about 53 ohms resistance. But what if we wanted to connect it to a 230 volt circuit? What that means is, is that we can take a look right here on the orange wire, and what we're showing you right there is that we're just at about 66.5 ohms resistance. That's because we are reading all of the available windings on the primary side. We would still wind up, regardless of what we did, delivering this on the secondary, the 24 volts that we discussed. And on this particular transformer here, we can also test the secondary winding by connecting simply to the both leads that lead out from the secondary side, and we can see that what we're looking at right there is in this particular case, here again, we have a secondary winding that only has a resistance of little more than one ohm. And now what we're going to do is show you with a simple schematic illustration here again, this multi-tap transformer that we were talking about. Remember, we said the secondary was still going to be nothing more than 24 volt output. However, what we mentioned was is that we had a connection here and a connection here and these connections equal the 240 volt connection from this point here to this point right over here. We also said that this particular transformer could be connected to 208 volts, which would mean that if we had a connection that just came off the shorter winding, this would be the 208 volt connection. And if we took away even more of the winding, what we would understand here is that would be the 120 volt connection that we showed you. And now there's another important point we want to discuss in regard to the fundamentals of transformers. And that's something that we want to talk about. It's called VA rating. Let's take a look at these two transformers first. They look the same. In other words, the wiring connections on these multi-tap primary transformers and the wiring on the secondary is exactly the same color code. So from a distance, they look like the same transformer. However, when you look closely, you're going to notice that there is a difference between the two of them. This particular transformer is rated at what we call 40 VA, and the other transformer is rated at what we call 20 VA. Now, what is a VA rating in relation to a transformer? Well, a VA rating, to put it simply, is nothing more than the amount of work that a transformer can do. VA stands for Volt Amp Rating, and what it boils down to is this. If I had a small furnace, for example, that all it was was an old standing pilot furnace, the VA rating of that transformer might only be 10. If I had another furnace, for example, that used electronic ignition and had more of a load on the low voltage side, we might move up to a 20 VA transformer. If we were working with a package unit air conditioner or a split system, though, that did both heating and cooling, we would likely be working with a 40 VA transformer. When we move up to heat pumps, it's possible that you might be working with a 60 or even a 65 VA transformer. The point I need you to understand here is that when you replace a transformer, double check to make sure that it has the right volt amp rating so that you're using the right replacement. Now, the other type of transformer that we want to talk about is one that not only has multiple taps on the primary, but also multiple taps on the secondary, like this one right here. This particular transformer that you're looking at right here has not only those multiple taps on the primary that we showed you, but on the secondary side, it's capable of different voltages on the step down side. And now we'll go back to our simple schematic diagram to show you what we were talking about as far as a multi-tap secondary winding on the transformer. What we want to point out is that originally what we talked about is that this would be your 24 volt connection because that's the maximum that you could get. Now, it's very possible, though, that this particular transformer would have a center tap on it, which would mean that that would be capable of a 12-volt connection. And then also, there would be another connection that would give you a very small secondary, which in many cases is only maybe 2.5 or maybe 3 volts AC. And now what we want to do is we want to show you the proper procedure that you could follow when using an ohmmeter to test the secondary windings on this multi-tap transformer that we're telling you about on the secondary side. 
What we want to do is we want to begin by pointing out that on this particular transformer, blue is the common wire, and the other three wires are going to be wired into the transformer secondary depending on what type of secondary voltage you want to get out. So if we were to test for resistance, we're going to start with the common wire, which like we said is the blue one, and then we would go directly to the yellow wire. Now when we put our ohmmeter on the blue and the yellow wire in this particular instance, what you're going to notice is that we're going to get about 1.4 ohms resistance. That's because this is the 24 volt connections between the blue and the yellow. Now if we move on to testing between the blue and the black wire, we're going to get a different resistance, which is going to be just about 1 ohm resistance, and that's because this particular winding right here is what we call the 12 volt tap. In other words, we're only going to get 12 volts out rather than 24. Now if we switch over to testing between the blue and the white, what you're going to notice is that we get the lowest resistance reading that we've got on the secondary side. It's only a fraction of an ohm because we're only going to get two and a half volts out of that particular winding. And what we want to show you now is a simple drawing of a transformer that is in fact multi-tap as it's incorporated into a simple piece of equipment. We want to focus on this area right here. This is a multi-tap primary transformer, and you'll notice that in this particular case right here, it's showing the black wire as common, it's showing a blue wire as 208 volts, and it's showing red as the 230 volt connection. The point we want to make here is that you need to pay attention to each individual manufacturer's diagram so that you can identify the correct colors that are used originally and also make sure you double check your replacement transformer to make sure you're making the right connections. Now one more point that we want to make, even though it may not be shown in some cases, on the 24 volt side you may find a separate fuse protecting the control voltage system on HVAC equipment. We want to point out that you're supposed to find this fuse on the common wire on the secondary side of the electrical system. So what that means is, is if you had a piece of equipment that was totally dead, for example, and wouldn't run, one very simple troubleshooting question you could ask is, is there a fuse on the 24 volt side of the electrical system? And if it's there, is it okay? All you have to do is locate the fuse holder on the common wire. For example, take a look at this transformer right here. We were working with it earlier and we mentioned that the blue wire was in fact the common wire. What that means is, is that's why we're going to find the fuse holder there. So all we have to do is locate the fuse holder, take the fuse out, and what I want you to understand is, is that in some cases you could do a visual inspection of the fuse to find out if it's okay. That's not the best way to find out. The best way to find out is, is to take an ohmmeter and put one lead on one side of the fuse and one lead on the other side of the fuse. And when you do that, you can take a look at your ohmmeter and you'll notice that it's going to show continuity. What that means is the fuse is okay. Now if our meter had showed infinity or open line, it would mean that this fuse was open and keeping the unit from running. And now what we want to do is focus on a complete schematic diagram as we continue with our discussion on the fundamentals of control transformers. This particular diagram right here is of a furnace, and what I want you to understand is right in the middle is the symbol for the transformer. The point that we want to make here is that understanding transformers is an important beginning to the fundamentals of troubleshooting HVAC systems overall because the transformer itself, as you can see, the symbol is what makes up the entire diagram with the primary components shown here and the secondary components shown here. And that brings us to the end of our video presentation on the fundamentals of control transformers. We hope you've enjoyed it and we hope you've learned something from it. For information on more video training programs that are available, you can call Technical Training Associates at area code 520-625-6847, or you can visit the website at www.technicaltrainingassoc.com. This is Jim Johnson saying we'll see you next time.